Hey guys, this is Landon with the Command Valley, bringing you another Commander Deck Tech. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring our channel. If you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing so, check out the link in the description below. We have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description that you can paste right in their deck builder and buy your singles there. If you're interested in supporting the channel directly, you can head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. So Commander Legends has given us a huge wave of new legendary creatures and today's deck tech is going to be on one of the uncommon legendary creatures in this set, the Abomination of Lanowar. This deck is super nostalgic to me because it is an elf tribal deck and the very first commander deck I had ever built was a mono green Azuri the Renegade Leaner elf tribal deck. It was a ton of fun to play and I've been waiting a long time for a really good green black elf commander. There are some but I really like this one so I'm super excited for today's deck. Like I mentioned, this is going to be an elf tribal deck. A lot of people will call them elf ball decks because of the ability that elves have to just get a ton of elves on the battlefield. And the more elves you have, the more benefit you get. So I'm going to break this deck down, go over how it's trying to win and how we're going to get there. All right, so let's start off by taking a closer look at Abomination of Lanawar. It is a one, a green and a black for a legendary creature elf horror. It has vigilance and menace and its power and toughness are each equal to the number of elves we control plus the number of elves in our graveyard. This deck isn't focusing too much on putting elves into the graveyard, just focusing on getting as many elves as we can into play play and getting Abomination of Lanowar super huge and swinging in a fit for the win. So as is very common for elf decks, we are playing a ton of mana dorks. So we've got Elves of Deep Shadow, which can tap for a black, but it deals a damage to us. Then we have Finthorn Elves, Elvish Mystic, and Lanowar Elves. These are basically all the same creature. We then have Arbor Elf, which can untap a forest, which essentially gives us one mana. We then have some elves that give us forests when they come to play, like Wood Elves. ETBs lets us find a forest. Spring Bloom Druid, when it enters the battlefield, we have to sacrifice a land, but we can search our library for two and put them directly into play. Lanowar Visionary, which draws us a card when it enters the battlefield, and it can tap for a mana. And then Solvala, Heart of the Wilds. This is one of the more expensive cards in the deck. Um, it's a little bit over the average uh, price for cards that I like to keep, but I feel like it has so much synergy with the commander that it's definitely worth the include. So Solvala, you can pay a green and tapper to add X mana of any combination of colors where X is the greatest power among creatures we control. And since our commander is going to be getting very big based on how many elves we have, Solvala is going to do a lot of work in the deck. And she has the added benefit of drawing us a card whenever we play a really big creature. We're also playing a Soul Ring, a Haro, and three visits just to add a little bit more ramp into the deck. All right, it wouldn't be a proper elf deck without lords. Lord is kind of a slang term for a creature that gives a power buff to creatures of a certain type. So we've got Elvish Clan Caller, Dwinin, Guilt Leaf Dane, Imperious Perfect, and Elvish Champion. Each of these creatures give all of our elves plus one plus one. Dwinin gains us life whenever we attack with elves. Imperious Perfect can tap to put elves into play. And Elvish Champion gives all of our other elves forest walk. All right, this next category, I'm kind of referring to the strength in numbers. These are elves that really help give us more elves or reward us for having a bunch of elves. So we've start off with Lissalana Huntmaster, and this is just one of my favorite cards in all of Magic. Whenever we cast an elf spell, we can make a 1-1 green elf creature token, which is super powerful. We then have Timberwatch Elf. We can tap to give target creature plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of elves on the battlefield. So this is really good with our commander since it has vigilance, we can swing in with it. And then before damage, tap the Timberwatch Elf to buff our commander by a ton. We then have Immaculate Magistrate, which is essentially the same thing as Timberwatch Elf, except for instead of it only getting the power until end of turn, Immaculate Magistrate just gives it plus one plus one counters instead. We then have Well Wisher, which is super efficient for what it does. We can tap it to gain one life for each elf on the battlefield. We then have Prowess of the Fair, which is really good in this deck. Whenever another non-token elf is put into your graveyard from play, we can put a 1-1 green elf warrior creature token into play. And it is a tribal enchantment. So when this is in the graveyard or in play, this will actually count towards our commander's power and toughness. We then have Elvish Promenade, which is really good. It is a tribal sorcery elf. So that's relevant because when it's in our graveyard, it will also bump up our commander's power and toughness. And we can put a 1-1 green elf warrior creature token into play for each elf we control. So this is really powerful. This can give us a whole army super quick. Next up we have Priest of Titania and Elvish Archdruid. Elvish Archdruid is also a lord bumping up all of our elves by plus one plus one but both Priest of Titania and Elvish Archdruid can tap at a green to our mana pool for each elf we control. Elvish Guidance is very similar except for it's an enchantment that goes on a land and that land will give us a green mana for each elf on the battlefield. And then we have Marwyn the Nurturer which is really good in the deck um, we can tap at a green equal to her power, and whenever another elf enters battlefield under our control, we can put a plus one plus one counter on Marwyn. If we happen to have Marwyn out with Imperious Perfect, 
or Timberwatch Elf, this can get super out of hand, giving us a ton of mana. And finally, for our Strength in Numbers category, we have Nadir, Agent of Duskenel. It is a legendary creature, and whenever a token we control leaves the battlefield, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on Nadir. And when he leaves play, we get to create a number of 1-1 one, one green Elf Warrior tokens equal to its power. So if we can bump this up with our Lords, or with Timberwatch Elf, or Immaculate Magistrate, or if Nadir just sees us make a bunch of tokens, he will also make us a ton of tokens when he leaves play. The next category I've labeled as Advantage and Advantage Elves. So these are the cards that give us card draw or other types of advantage, and it's a pretty big category. Let's start this off with Beast Whisperer, which is probably the best card in the deck. Whenever we cast a creature spell, we get to draw a card. With how many efficient and cheap elves we have, this is going to draw us a lot of cards throughout the game. We then have Miara, Thorn of the Glade, which is a new card from Commander Legends, and whenever she or another elf we control dies, we can pay one generic mana and one life, and if we do, we get to draw a card. What I really like about this is she doesn't care if it's a token or not. Whenever an elf dies, we get to pay one mana and draw a card, which is really good. Next up, we have Elvish Harbinger, which is a really powerful tutor in this deck. When it enters a battlefield, we can search our library for any elf, reveal it, put it on top of our library, plus it taps for mana. With this, we are really wanting to find Beast Whisper and get on top of our library because that card is really going to help us win games. We then have Golgari Fine Broker, which I had to substitute this in last minute because I totally forgot that Eternal Witness was not an elf. I feel super dumb. It's not quite as good as Eternal Witness, but when it enters the battlefield, we can return target permanent from our graveyard to our hand. Our deck is primarily permanent, so that's it's really good in the deck. And then we have Store of Devkarin Lich, and this is a super interesting card. Um, I've been playtesting it, and I actually think that it's really useful. It has Trample, it's a 5-4, and when it deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, we can return a creature from our graveyard to our hand as long as it wasn't put there this combat. I think that this is a super good recursion piece. A lot of our elves are going to be picked off by our opponents, maybe our lord, maybe one of our elves that creates a ton of mana. So being able to get them back and cast them again to trigger maybe a Beast Whisperer or one of the other cards that we're going to talk about later on, I think is super impactful. So those are it for the value elves. Let's go over some of the value spells that we have. So we have Return of the Wild Speaker, which has two purposes in this deck. The first one is we can draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures we control. Since we're playing all elves, that's, you know, that's not really relevant. And since we have a very big commander, we're going to be drawing a ton of cards off of that or we can give all of our non-human creatures plus three plus three until end of turn. So this can either be a early game, draw us a bunch of cards, give us the gas that we need, or late game, help us close out the game by pumping up all of our creatures. We then have Village Right, which I think is a super underrated card for one black mana at instant speed. We can sacrifice a creature to draw two cards. We then have Hunter's Insight, which we can choose a creature we control, and whenever that creature does combat damage to a player or Planeswalker this turn, we get to draw that many cards. This is already a good card in green decks that want to attack, but it's even better when our commander is all about attacking and being super powerful. Next up, we have Shamanic Revelation, which is going to let us draw a card for each creature we control, and we gain four life for each creature we control with power four or greater. If we have a couple of lords out, it's not unreasonable for us to be gaining a ton of life, but we're always going to be drawing a ton of cards because this deck is playing a ton of creatures. We then have Rishkar's Expertise, which lets us draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures we control. We can then cast a spell with CMC five or less from our hand without paying its mana cost. So this card is just bonkers in this deck. Next up, we have Shared Summons, which is one of my favorite cards in green. It's an instant that lets us search our library for up to two creature cards with different names, reveal them, put them into our hand, and shuffle our library. Five mana is a lot, but at instant speed, being able to tutor up two creatures is super good, and putting them right into our hand, so nice. So with this, we're going to be looking for Beast Whisperer or maybe one of our other creatures to help us close out the game. All right, next up, we have Skull Clamp, which is so good in this deck. It's an equipment that costs one to cast and one to equip. The equipped creature gets plus one minus one, and whenever the equipped creature dies, we get to draw two cards. So for one mana, we can turn one of our little mana dorks or one of our cheap little elf creature tokens into two cards. And if it's not a token and it's one of our mana dorks or one of our other weaker elves, that's still going to keep our Abomination of Llanowar's power and toughness pretty high. We're then playing Guardian Project and Zendikar Resurgent. Each of them let us draw a card whenever we cast a creature spell. Zendikar Resurgent having the added benefit of making all of our lands tap for more mana and it is a little bit more expensive mana wise, but I think it's totally worth it. We're then playing Court of Calling, which I thought was way more expensive price wise when I was while I was building the deck. I was super happy to see that it's only $3 right now. So at instant speed with Convoke, we can search our library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less and put it right onto the battlefield, then shuffle our libraries. Our creatures can help us cast a spell and each one that we tap while paying for it pays for one generic mana or of one of that creature's color. So this is a super powerful card in this deck and can help us tutor up one of our really impactful creatures to help us close out the game. 
Next up, we're playing Eldritch Evolution, and as an additional cost to cast this spell, we have to sacrifice your creature, but we get to search our library for a creature card with CMC X or less, where X is 2 plus the sacrifice creature's converted mana cost. We get to put that card directly into play, and then we have to exile Eldritch Evolution. Again, this is a super useful card. This can help us find our Beast Whisperer or maybe a Priest of Titania or an Elvish Arch Steward if we need the mana. But really, Beast Whisperer is like the best card in the deck and really helps get the ball rolling. So that's why this is in the deck to find that. And then finally, in this category, we have Victimize. So for three mana, we have to sacrifice a creature. And if we do, we get to return two creatures from our graveyard into the battlefield tapped. So that is just really good recursion. Maybe get back some of our pieces that are really important to us if our opponents picked them off. So. All right, this next category, I'm just gonna call this Kill Confirm. These are the ways we have in the deck of closing out the game besides our commander. So let's start off with Gerard Golgari Lich Lord. He is a legendary creature that gets plus one plus one for each creature card in our graveyard and we can pay one green and a black to sacrifice another creature and each opponent loses life equal to the cr sacrificed creature's power. We can also sacrifice a swamp and a forest to return Jared from our graveyard to our hand. So with him, we can swing in with our commander, deal a ton of damage to one of our opponents and then sacrifice it with Gerard's ability to deal a bunch of damage to our opponents. Or if we have, you know, a couple other elves that have gotten a ton of power from our Lords or Immaculate Magistrate or Timberwatch elves, those are also really good to sacrifice as well. Next up, we're playing Izoni Thousand Eyed, which is another really powerful legendary elf. She has an undergrowth ability, which says when she enters the battlefield, we're going to make a 1-1 black and green insect token for each creature card in our graveyard. So since this deck is playing a ton of creatures, she is really good late game if an opponent has board wiped a couple of times and we've our graveyard is just full of creatures. Izoni is going to give us a little army of insects and we can use our Return of the Wild speaker to pump them and swing in for the win. She also has a really powerful activated ability that costs a green and a black and sacrifice another creature. And we're going to gain a life and draw a card if we do that, which I think is really useful. All right, next up we have Overwhelming Stampede, which is a really good way of closing out games. Overwhelming Stampede is going to give all of the creatures we control trample and plus X plus X, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control until the end of turn. This is super useful with the Abomination of Lanawar and is going to make our team massive and let them swing in for the win. We then have Tainted Strike, which at instant speed and for one mana can give a creature plus one plus O and infect until the end of turn. This is super mean and can take an opponent out out of nowhere, but it is really good. We then have Shaman of the Pack, which I have a soft spot in my heart for this card. I played a really janky elf tribal deck back in Origins Standard, and this is the centerpiece of the deck, so I had to throw it in here. When it enters a battlefield, target opponent is going to lose life equal to the number of elves we control. Poison Tip Archer is really good board wipe propellant because whenever another creature dies, it's going to make each of our opponents lose one life, which is crazy. So not only are our opponents going to lose life based off of our creatures, they're also going to lose life off of the other player's creatures as well when the board wipe goes off. So really good card. And then we have the splashiest card in the deck, Genesis Wave. Genesis Wave lets us reveal the top X cards of our library, and we can put any number of permanent cards with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Then put all the cards revealed this way that were not put onto the battlefield into our graveyard. So a large majority of our elves have a really low to the ground CMC. And we can make a ton of mana with our mana dorks and the lords that tap for a ridiculous amount of mana. So it is not hard for us to put, you know, maybe six or seven into the X of Genesis Wave. And if for whatever really weird reason, we don't put some elves into play, they go into the graveyard, that's still just as good because it's going to pump our commander. All right, now let's go over the ways we have of interacting with our opponents. We're not playing a whole bunch because we're trying to focus really hard on our strategy, but we are playing a good amount. So we've got Abrupt Decay, Putrefy, Nature's Claim, Beast Within, and Reclamation Sage. Each of these can deal with permanent, pesky permanents on our opponent's side of the board. We've also got Wilt, which also has the added benefit of being able to be cycled away for a card if we don't need it. We then have Eye Blight Massacre, which is going to give all non-elves minus two, minus two until end of turn. And then Elvish Dreadlord, which is a really cool card from Commander Legends with the Encore mechanic. So when it dies, all non-elf creatures get minus three, minus three until end of turn. But if we can Encore it for seven mana, um, we can exile it from our graveyard. And for each opponent, we're going to make a token that is a copy of Elvish Dreadlord. And they have to attack that opponent this turn if able. And they also get haste. And then we have to sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step. So basically, if we encore the Elvish Dreadlord, we're going to get three copies of them, swing with them, whether, you know, they die or not, doesn't really matter, because at the end of the turn, we have to sacrifice them, and then all of our opponent's creatures are going to get minus nine, minus nine until end of turn, which is more than likely going to take out all of our opponent's things. And since we're only playing elves, it is not going to impact us negatively, even in the slightest. 
All right, and finally, let's go over the ways we have of protecting our commander and protecting our strategy. So I'd be super remiss if I did not include a Zuri Renegade leader because for nostalgia reasons, and he's also really good, for one green mana, we can regenerate another target elf and we can pay two and three green to give all of the elves we control plus three plus three and trample until the end of turn. We then have Golgari Charm, which has three modes and we get to choose one of them. So all creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn. We can destroy target enchantment or regenerate each creature we control. So more than likely we're gonna we're going to want to save this to regenerate our whole board if a board wipe happens. Rapid Vigor is essentially the same role in the deck, being able to regenerate each creature we control. Super useful. And then we have Swift Foot Boots and Lightning Greaves that we can put on our commander uh, to protect it. But also, it's really good to give creatures haste in this deck because we've got some really powerful mana dorks or ways of generating a ton of mana, and we want to be able to do that the turn that these creatures come out. All right, now let's go over the mana base. So we are playing a Blooming Marsh, a Command Tower, an Exotic Orchard, a Golgari Rot Farm, a Llanowar Wastes, a Tainted Wood, and a Wirewood Lodge, and a Woodland Cemetery. Wirewood Lodge is really nice. We can pay a green and tap it to untap an elf. We can use that on our mana dorks that produce more than one mana, so that's really useful. We're then playing Myriad Landscape, which enters tapped. We can pay two to sacrifice it to search our library for two basic land cards and put them into play. Myriad Landscape also has to tap for that ability, so it's a little slow, but it's good ramp. We're then playing Castle Garen Brig, which enters the battlefield tapped unless we control a forest. It can add a green to our mana pool, or we can pay two and two green to tap it and add six green to our mana pool. We can only spend this to cast creature spells or activate abilities of creatures, but this deck is primarily creatures, so it's really not a big deal. We're then playing 14 forests and 10 swamps. And with that, this video is coming to a close. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you to all of our subscribers and all of our Patreons. We really appreciate your guys' support and you guys are awesome. If you are interested in supporting us directly, you can head on over to Patreon at patreon.com slash commanddeli. It does support us directly. You get access to exclusive content, our Discord, merch, and a ton of other perks. And another reminder that going through the link in the, in the description below to purchase your singles will really help out the channel directly. And Game Grid now ships nationwide so you can get your cards wherever you are here in America. And another reminder that we are live streaming every Tuesday at 7 p.m. And you can join us for some brawl on Arena. And our social medias are Command Deli P1. And don't forget to like us on Facebook. And links for all that is in the description below. Another huge thank you to all those who take the time to watch our videos. We really appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. We couldn't do this without you. And I hope you guys have an excellent week.